In this video, I'll talk about why the Dogecoin and crypto crash is almost over. But before we look at the data, let's talk about some great news that came out for the crypto market today. Two new ADAS were introduced in Australia today. Initially coming to Australia through two providers, these three ETFs will mean Australia is now the eighth country in the world to offer direct exposure to Bitcoin. The first two ETFs, 21 shares Bitcoin and 21 shares Ethereum, have begun trading on the SIBO exchange today, with the broker saying this is the first of its kind in Australia. ETF Securities Head of Distribution Kanish Chu said that Australian investor interest in cryptocurrencies has not waned in recent months even as we have seen underperformance and with Bitcoin's recent sell-off as well, it may present an opportunity for investors who have been looking for attractive entry points into this new asset class. The third option for investors is the Cosmos Purpose Bitcoin Access ETF, which is another physically backed Bitcoin ETF. In this instance, Cosmos is in a partnership with the first ever Bitcoin ETF provider purpose. And another great news came from South Korea, which is soon going to implement crypto into its institutional systems. So the legislation proposal to merge Bitcoin and other cryptos into the country's institutional framework will provide protection for people to invest with digital assets. And the legislation has 110 policy goals announced by the new president of South Korea. South Korea's new leadership will complete the legal framework for the local digital asset ecosystem and implement it in 2024. The legislation helps to combine cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin into the country's institutional system. The government will pass the Digital Assets Basic Act in 2023 to make cryptos completely legal in the country. Also, they approve the Bank of Korea's plans to set up a central bank digital currency. The legislation will also help Korean financial institutions to offer crypto services. In addition, the South Korean government plans to legalize non-fungible tokens and establish a regulatory framework for initial coin offerings. Moving on, let's talk about why the crash for cryptos might be close to an end. So we know that the crash happened because of inflation and the tariff fiasco. It seems that the latter problem is not as bad as it was. So the price of Luna, the native stablecoin of the open-source blockchain transaction platform Terra has risen sharply by almost 600% after suffering the worst deflation. Even though it was recently banned from Binance, this is definitely great news for the entire crypto market. There's another reason why I think we've almost reached the bottom for Bitcoin. Remember, we're talking about Bitcoin because the correlation between Bitcoin and Doge is sky-high right now. So William Clement talked about six reasons why Bitcoin is close to its bottom. Now let's talk about the six on-chain indicators charts he presented. The first chart that Will Clement presents is the so-called top-bottom models. It contains charts of two indicators, realized price and delta price. The former is the ratio between the realized market capitalization of Bitcoin and its running supply. It currently sits just above $24,000. On the other hand, the second indicator, delta price has served well in the past to determine the absolute lows of bear markets in 2011, 2015, and 2018. In the chart, we can see that delta price is today well below the December 2017 historical all-time high of 20,000. Somewhat contrary to Clement's arguments, if Bitcoin were to dive below this level, the current price is certainly not close to a bottom. On the other hand, if the bottom is to be set by realized price this time, the 24,000 level could serve as ultimate support. In his second argument, Will Clement uses the MVRV Z-score. It is used to assess when Bitcoin is overvalued or undervalued relative to its fair value. When the market value is significantly higher than the realized value, this historically indicates a market top, while the opposite situation indicates a market bottom. In the chart, we see an ongoing decline in the indicator toward the green zone, which however has not yet been reached. Indeed, in the past, staying in it and sometimes even falling below has been a marker of an absolute bottom for the Bitcoin price. Therefore, it seems that despite the low value of the indicator, there is still room for a continuation of the downward movement. Another indicator is the Entity Adjusted Dormancy Flow. This indicator is an improved version of the average coin dormancy, which indicates the average number of days destroyed per coin transacted. Its improved version rejects transactions between addresses of the same entity, giving a better market signal and reflecting actual market activity.
According to Clement, the indicator has been in the buy zone for the last few months but is now approaching levels that previously set generational bottoms. In fact, looking at the chart, we see that the indicator is already firmly below the bottom of the COVID-19 crash in March 2020. Moreover, it is close to reaching the December 2018 area when Bitcoin fell to the $3,150 level. Next, Clement turns his attention to reserve risk. This indicator is used to gauge the confidence of long-term holders relative to the price of Bitcoin at any given time. When confidence is high and the price is low, reserve risk reaches low values. When confidence is low and the price is high, the indicator gives high readings. Currently, the chart has been in the green low risk zone for several months. However, unlike entity adjusted dormancy flow, the March 2020 level has not yet been reached here. Clement says the low reserve risk level is illustrating holder confidence relative to price. The fifth indicator presented by the analyst is the Mayer multiple. This is an oscillator that is calculated based on the ratio of the Bitcoin price to the 200-day moving average. Bitcoin's absolute lows were usually reached when this indicator fell sharply below 1. For example, the 2018 low brought the Mayer multiple to a value of 0.53. Currently, the indicator reaches a value of 0.63. Here again, Clement emphasizes that this is the buy zone, almost at historical lows. The last indicator that Will Clement refers to is the 200-week moving average. In the long-term Bitcoin chart, the average has served as the ultimate support for any bear market. However, sometimes there have been long wicks or even weekly closes below it. Currently, the 200-week M is located at the $21,832 level. Reaching this valuation would involve Bitcoin falling another 25% from its current value. It is worth noting that this level is just below the $24,000 realized price chart presented in the first argument. The above six arguments made by Will Clement may indeed suggest that a bottom in the Bitcoin price is close to being reached. But I still need to caution you. In each of the charts above, we can see that the historical lows have not yet been reached. Several indicators even suggest the possibility of a drop to or below 20K, testing the all-time high level from the previous cycle. Another analysis came from Bloomberg Intelligence analyst Mike McGlone, who said it's the top two cryptos by market cap that will lead to the most gains after the recent price dip that affected all asset classes. McGlone pinpointed the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes as being more detrimental to the U.S. stock market long term than proven digital assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. He said that, the key thing to remember if the stock market keeps going down, which is likely because the Fed needs it to go down and reduce inflation, Bitcoin and Ethereum will go down, but they'll come out ahead. Overall, the volatility of these nascent crypto assets, most notably Bitcoin, has continued to decline versus the stock market. That's what happened with Amazon when it first came out. Its volatility in 2009 was the same as with Bitcoin right now. Investors are looking forward to the future. Do you really want to miss out on this revolution? That's what I see happening. A little bit of selling offers in the stock market and bids below in things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now another great news for cryptos came from Google. Analysis of Google Trends data reveals that worldwide searches for buy crypto exploded by 102% on 12th May. A new finding by Safe Trade Binary Options revealed that online interest for buy crypto exploded by more than twice the average search volume over the past 24 hours. A spokesperson for Safe Trade Binary Options said, Crypto is becoming more and more popular as an option for investors, but it is also still an unknown world for many. The recent crash in the market may have prompted people who were on the fence to buy the dip and invest in crypto for the first time, while prices are at their lowest in two years. Now let's talk about some bad news that came from the U.S. government. So the U.S. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce has signaled that SEC could develop stricter rules around crypto stablecoins soon due to the Terra's USD crash incident. When asked about crypto supervision, Pierce said that stablecoins are likely to be the first sector to be regulated in light of the USD crash. She said that, stablecoins an area that has obviously this week gotten a lot of attention. She then also said, there are different potential options for approaching stablecoins, and with experimentation, we need to allow room for there to be a failure.
In addition, she commented on the opportunity that the SEC has a chance to capture virtual currencies and the technology platforms where they can be traded under the agency's broad rulemaking authority. In one of last year's statements about crypto, Gensler compared stablecoins to the tools for gambling at old-timey casinos, saying, We've got a lot of casinos here in the Wild West, and the poker chips are these stablecoins at the casino gaming tables. So basically, we might see crypto regulation in the U.S., which would then lead to another crypto winter. So we need to be prepared for that. Now coming back to Dogecoin, at the current price, 53% of holders are still making money. Also, as I said, its correlation with Bitcoin has reached sky high. The point is that if the bottom has reached for Bitcoin, it's perhaps reached for Dogecoin. And that's why I'm really excited for the next week's trading sessions.